Hey, this is Alan with Game Lark Remixes, and I'm joined by ABXY, a live video game band from Brighton, England. Say hello, guys. Hello. Hi. How's it going? Waves. Yeah, not so bad. So why don't you introduce yourselves? Uh, any order you wish. <laughs> uh, let's go left to right. Chris, yeah. you go first. I'm Chris. Hi, Chris. What do you Hi, do? Chris. <laughs> I'm not, I, what I do play you do? backing keyboards. I play second keyboard. And? And guitar. And saxophone. He does everything. Okay. <laughs> I'm Ron Burgundy. No, I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm Luke. Uh, I'm the guitarist in the band. Um, I'm Alex. I'm, uh, I'm the keyboard player. Well... Keytar. I lie, yeah, Keytar. That's a very important, important distinction. Yeah. <laughs> and vocalist. It's very difficult. Yeah, in one song. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm Vicky and I'm the bassist. I'm Dan and I'm the drummer. All right. So let's start from the beginning. How Were you all friends before you started this band? Were you just joined by video game music? Were you uh, making you know regular music and then decided you love video games? Tell me okay. your story. So I'll have to fill this one. As quickly uh, as you can. <laughs> it's a long story. It's a very long story. I'll be as quick as I can. These two are my housemates. Okay. And um, when I first started the band, I asked the both of them if they were interested. And Dan said, no, I want to do serious music. <laughs> uh, and I said, I said, fair enough, you know, because um, Dan's very, you're very sort of, yeah. <laughs> serious. Very serious. He's very serious. No, he's not serious. Um, <laughs> We got another guy involved who's now our photographer, uh, and we went through a few members and um, in a few different forms, but in the opening months. But long story short, um, we uh, we got close to Chris, um, uh, lives over the road, and I, I the more because my original concept for the band was to play uh, video game music live, um, and a lot of bands that do cover video game music tend to sort of be guitar focused or guitar based mm -hmm. and I wanted to really emulate the um, the the song, the original song as best as, as possible so by using like samples or a lot of electronics and stuff but I didn't want to go full that, I wanted to still want to have a live bass and live drum sound and live guitar like very uh, full, full driving, band, yeah. Yeah, the full band experience but with uh, you know the electronic side as well. Um, so the more I was playing uh, my parts, I realized I, I need a second electronic voice. So I thought it would be really good to get Chris involved. Um, and so he plays a lot of, um, we, we flesh out the parts fully between us, whereas I'm playing a lot of the lead parts, hence why I'm on a guitar. I'm only ever using one hand, really, whereas Chris is utilizing sample pads. He's, he does everything. He plays sax, guitar, just anything we need. He's just, he's just the guy. Um, so that's really cool. I actually, none of us knew Vicky before. We'd only know, heard about remember. Vicky. Yeah, you saw, um, I posted like a cover of um, so that um, was, Managuchi. Yeah. Like, oh, I remember that. Yeah. Um, and then you messaged me. So I, I'd heard of you before. Yeah. So, that, yeah, we had so just, you showed us Vicky's video and mm, we yeah. was like, yeah, we, I think this is going to work out. And we, you, you contacted her on, was it on Facebook? Mm. Yeah. That was like a year, and, was it a year and a half ago? We, I remember we went to a local studio, we had a jam, and we jammed Mr. Cave Zone. Yeah. yeah. And we all left, and we walked us to the bus stop, and as we were walking home together, we were like, well, this is the one. Mm. <laughs> you were saying, we were worried you wouldn't be interested, and you were saying, you were saying things like, what are we going to do? You were using collective words, and I was like, She's just in the band already. <laughs> we didn't need to convince this is you. My band. We, yeah, because we were worried that, like, you know, you'd be too good for it. Because when we first exchanged emails, you were just like, "No, oh, think about it." I've got a lot of offers. Right it's like the only reason I stuck around is because it was like probably the weirdest thing I've ever done, like mm. in terms of music. So, mm. but now we're friends. Yeah, now we're all close, and it's all cool. Awesome. So it sounds like you all started from just a general music background, and then you came up with the idea for Alex. You came up with the idea for a video game themes and live video game music and well, actually oh sorry go ahead oh well you can finish what you were saying first and then i agree that that most of the bands you see are guitar based or guitar focused so and that is something i did immediately notice about your music listening to it um on soundcloud and that one clip you have in youtube that it was very electronic heavy mm. not mm. not in a bad way just like a very full it's surprising that you can get that full of a sound with just a five-piece band so mm. Yeah, it's um, it's it's yeah, it's it's something that I I really wanted to do. <laughs> it's difficult at times. Oh, yeah. oh, it's, oh, it's, it's very difficult. Yeah. We've, we've had to experiment a lot with like different uh, voices and effects. I've actually had to invest in. I, I never got into guitar pedals beforehand before yeah, this same. band. I've had to buy I don't know seven since <laughs> I've, I've joined. 
Now I'm obsessed with them. So this is mm. put, this band has put me in debt. I bought myself an entire keyboard. <laughs> oh yeah, no, he had to. He was. We were using a Roland Juno Di, which was mine before, which is a bog standard 500 pound rubbish keyboard. You better tell the story, Dan. You tell it better than me. Because you, didn't you convince Chris to just spend all oh, his yeah, money? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so Chris has got just enough money to buy this North keyboard. Which is like... Which I've wanted for a long time. I wanted the keyboard anyway, so I was biased. But uh, <laughs> and we come home from class one day, and I, and I was just telling Dan, man, I, I really want that keyboard, you know? And I've wanted it for a while, so Dan goes, you have the money. Why don't you just get it? <laughs> And I didn't really have an argument for it. <laughs> I mean, I didn't have my own well, keyboard at the time. I didn't you have my you own... had the money, but you didn't have any other money. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, no, I didn't have any <laughs> other money except for the money for the keyboard. It was only, so you sacrificed, like, food for, like, months, <laughs> like, you know, yeah. and Wi-Fi, and you were, like, over here, like, can I have your Wi-Fi? <laughs> oh, man, yeah. oh, but the, the keyboard is actually... Like, yeah, I love it. I love it's, it. It's, it's the as most good as I wanted. Probably the most powerful yeah. bit of gear in the band, arguably. It's... Very cool. There's, there's also, I've got a SPDSX, which I picked up just for the band, which does yeah. some sort of backing star. Mm. Um, and it's quite funny, actually. I bought a new drum kit for the band like a day before we had our That's third right. gig. I kept, telling, I kept telling him, like, do you have a drum kit? We are, sp we are the ones providing the kit for the gig. So, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get one. And then the day before you came back, you went, you drove, where did you go? Like, across the country. To like yeah, basically. Bought a brand new drum kit. Not, not like America. Day before. Yeah. Not like America across the country. No. <laughs> yeah. Across one state. Really. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the smallest state. Yeah. yeah, the smallest state. In terms of, <laughs> to, get, to get back to what you were saying at the very beginning, um, it was it was me who sort of came up with the idea of doing video game stuff live because we're all at uni. We're all at the same music uni together. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was... Uh, we're encouraged to sort of start bands and make connections, do that sort of thing. And I, when I very started, when I very first started playing uh, piano, uh, the first music I learned was Zelda on the piano and mm -hmm. uh, other video game tunes. So, like, and I'm self-taught on everything I've done until I came to uni and started realizing, you know, the whole world of, you know, uh, sheet music and the proper way, the techniques. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, um, and the bands really helped with that, but. Uh, in terms of uh, musicality, like I've always sort of wanted, like it would be like my dream. Like I've always listened to like video game music and like heard uh, like z z different parts, pulled it apart, and thought, oh, it'd be great to play that with a band, play that live. Um, and because it, it's all technically very demanding. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's all just really nice music. Like when you actually learn it, you think, like, mm. wow, these are just really like nicely written songs. I feel that even if you're not a geek, or even if you didn't play the music, uh, sorry, listen to the music, as, and you don't have any nostalgia factor attached to it. Just as a musician, I think I speak for everyone and I say it's very engaging material. That's why our friend, uh, well, yeah, Tom enjoys it. He doesn't yeah. know what it is, where mm. it's from. Even my parents. <laughs> <laughs> they really enjoyed it. Yeah, especially really... my parents as well. It's, it's always yeah. something new and challenging about the material, like different times. Like every every song that we do is a medley. Yeah. And different genres. Time and like, yeah. systems and tempos and, yeah. You name it. Yeah, so, uh, so like, as I was saying, like, I, I had the video game sort of thing and I thought what we're, we're now in a time that like uh, like I don't think anyone's embarrassed to um, be sort of who they are anymore with the internet and sort of being geeky and being out there and because I, I thought when I first thought of the band I was like I'll just get laughed at because all the other bands that are being formed are like they've got these really pretentious names and ridiculous you know, they're all like stone, they're really stoner cool. metal, and they're all yeah, they're all cool. Like, hey, hey, like, stoner metal's good though. Let's not. Oh, yeah, <laughs> but I mean, there's a, a, there there are, there are definitely scenes for what everyone else was getting into in Brighton, whereas I was sort of creating, well, not creating a scene, but like join, joining something that you know very few people are doing here, and we're still sort of struggling to find the crowd for people who enjoy what we do. Um, I could talk for a while about that. Yeah. In fact, you know, oh, it's, it's coming along. Dude. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. We, we, well, are, we have been together for a few years now, and it's you know well, about or as a as a five piece about one year, isn't it? Two years. One and a half, when we first something. started um, gigging, like it was when I joined the band, wasn't it? Like properly, as in like we had Show our first proper gig. When was that? Last year. Yeah, it was last summer. Mm. About a year and a half. About a year yeah. and a half, but still, yeah, it, it takes a long time with these things. So mm. that kind of leads into my next question, which is. How about how many gigs would you say you play? You know, a couple a month, a couple every other month. I mean, like you said, the scene isn't necessarily that big. So, I mean, how do you find? I'm just interested to know because I was in a 
was in a band shortly, a metal band. But I mean, it's difficult for anybody in any genre to get noticed because you have to have demos to send. But in order to get demos, you have to have money. But the only way to get money is to have fans and so forth and so on. So you find a catch 22. I'm curious, you know, what is the process? Do you just have friends that have venues and then you talk with them and network or how have you found the live experience, both in terms of, you know, scheduling it and then the fans? The, the gigging scene here is very good, very, very yeah. busy. So it's not difficult to find gigs if you're a band and you're well rehearsed um, okay. because there is a big demand for live music in yeah. Brighton. You can put your own like yeah. own gig on quite easily. Mm. Like You don't have to have really any experience to do it. The problem is, we, I mean, it's, it's kind of one of two things, and Dan probably slapped me in the back of the head for saying this, but it's like I, for, I, for a long time, figured I, I did I did hear from some promoters and some people when I mentioned the band to them you know who would support you how would you fit into our because if you, you can imagine like the typical you know pub standard band that's playing you know uh, and then us <laughs> it would just it wouldn't quite fit the bill um, and then th- the other times I wouldn't even ask because I just figured god you know I don't think anyone wants to hear what we have to do even though we were still rehearsing it was so stupid um, but we eventually did just sort of say, fuck it, like we need to get out there, we need to uh, play. And now we're sort of playing as mu- often as we can and, and being that stick in the mud, you know, saying like, we are this stupid video game band, <laughs> like, you know, enjoy it or don't. Um, and funnily enough, no one said it's stupid. No, yeah. every time we've played, we've been really well received. And um, in terms of how often we've gigged, um, we certainly could have done more in the time we've been together, but we've spent a, a massive amount of time as a band just making the material mm-hmm. yeah. because the way we go about writing, I say writing, it's not really writing. Arranging. Um, yeah. Arranging. Um, is, well, no one wants to hear Tetris for, you know, four minutes. They'll go mad. <laughs> so um, we, we uh, every one song is a mashup of different songs and tunes within the same franchise. Typically that's the rule, the loose rule. Um, we've bent it and broken it on some occasions, but... Um, we, we'll change the key of things and we'll musically try and link them as best as possible maybe tempo keeping the same tempo but often we're not keeping the same tempo and that's like you know yeah we did a we did a sonic arrangement oh god and so I make I make, <laughs> I make click tracks to play along to and if, if the tempo changes in the song then it changes on the click track mm-hmm. so I mean you play in the metal band right yeah try changing tempo 14 times in one song yeah <laughs> it's always awesome well, so fun. <laughs> in ter- talking oh. about the technological side of it with Sonic B, like it does get yeah. crazy. Like I have three different patches on my uh, main stage program, which I use for my guitar. So I- I'm constantly because I couldn't. I, basically, I loved Sonic Three and Knuckles. It's my favorite game of all time, and mm-hmm. that's my favorite soundtrack of all time. Therefore, my favorites too. Yeah. So me and you basically spearheaded this attack on the band, saying we have to combine the songs. We can't just have one like so it's like a seven minute epic now um with all these different voices and stuff um but yeah like that just goes to show how much effort we put into making them at least take a long time sort of learning all the parts and and another thing when you're at music uni every one of us not now but over the years that we've been together have been in hunt like not hundreds but <laughs> tens and tens of bands mm. loads of different projects that we've all sort of agreed to and to help someone out with their audition or their assessment or yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, it's it's a crazy schedule. So yeah, it, I guess it's balancing the arrangement and yeah. uni life as well as gigging because uh, we're all students at the same time. So, um, but we are looking to push gigs a lot more. Yeah, in the they future. do seem to be getting more frequent. Like I've noticed over the past, like more and more people seem mm-hmm. to come and like say, there's more people saying like, oh, you know, well, it's, it's a slow, slow yeah. gig. It's a yeah. slow start. It always is, you know, because the first gig we played to, even though it was a full room, that was mostly our friends. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's probably our, our best, biggest crowd. Uh, probably our best. Because that was an actual yeah. like that was a video games night. That was like an mm. event where like people would recognise most of the mm. songs, and it was that kind of crowd. But like mm. most of the gigs we've done after that have been just to like random people, mm. and it's always like, what are they going to think? Like, yeah, <laughs> this I think Kotaku really would be in there helped uh, quite a lot as well. Yeah, yeah. Robbie and Kezer, if you watch this, cheers. Yeah, cheers, <laughs> <Just> guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I think, I think the future is bright for video game music because. For one thing, video games have just completely infiltrated like pop culture, right? And I mean, um, 
I know at least for, in terms of cover music or arrangement on online, I don't know so much about the live scene, but I can imagine that it's growing as well. And it, it, and I know, you know, for instance, they had like the, what is it? I, I can't remember the exact name, but they had the um, the Zelda Symphony that came through oh. near where I live. And it's like, um, oh, didn't they play on Colbert as well? Yes, they did. They did. Uh, they're on a late Symphony of the Goddess, I think, is the tour. That was what the tour was called. So it's mm-hmm. it's now starting, hopefully, I think, to be respected as, as this is not just, you know, oh, that's geek stuff. I mean, there are some really, really, really talented composers in the world of video game music. And the one thing that I think that, that maybe distinguishes or maybe the reason that video game music is so memorable and it stays with us is because uh, I can't remember which composer it was, but they basically said – they would write their music and then just listen to it over and over and over again because you have to write something that is memorable but doesn't get grading over time because if you especially in something like Mario that that simple melody you're going to hear it over and over and over again so it's got to stick with you and it's got to be something that 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 like um, speaks to people i guess you know what i mean so you already have that versus something more like film where film is kind of uh, music is not quite as important as it is in gaming at least in my mind at least for a certain no, mood. I, I see exactly what you mean. As well, um, before gaming hit the mainstream, like they were using much more rudimentary um, you know, instruments and sound chips and all the mm-hmm. rest of it. So they had to work that much harder to make sure it was a catchy tune to stick in your head. They don't have, now, that main, now that gaming has hit the mainstream, um, they have access to, because so all the money that's gone into it, they have access to full orchestras right. and, you know, uh, and I mean that's a good thing and a bad thing in a sense because uh, you know AAA titles might not be sold entirely on the soundtrack. But some games, you know, especially uh, through thanks to you, like I've, I've listened to a lot of uh, music and your through your channel and stuff uh, and mm-hmm. discovered artists and uh, video games that I, I didn't play or mm-hmm. may not even ever play, but I just love the music for. Yeah. In fact, before we started this interview, Chris was showing us a few songs from Castlevania because I never played Castlevania. Mm-hmm. Um, that we were listening to, and <laughs> it's like the same how many like it's the same few songs, but through every game. And I was like, "This is amazing!" Here's all the different versions, putting in different styles, same, and different instrumentation, the same motif in different voices and different sometimes different tempos, different keys in different uh, eras. Oh, so much fun! And that I, game, I, can't, I can't think of another uh, you know genre of music where that's really a thing, you know, mm-hmm. or or a, a, a medium. Probably the medium is more important. Star Wars. What did you yeah. say? It's the same kind of thing. They reuse the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Light motifs are kind mm-hmm. of the, the, the yeah, big totally. thing. But yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and I was going to say, um, Castlevania is heavily influenced by classical music. Is uh, the genre of classical music? So, with gaming, I mean, you have everything from like it, like you were saying when the earlier days, you had uh, you had a lot a lot more limited sound sets. So it was all about the melody. And now we have AAA titles with full orchestras, like you said, Assassin's Creed. I don't know. I think it, personally I kind of gravitate maybe a little bit more towards the more classic video gaming tracks. You know what I mean? Like when I'm playing Assassin's Creed, I'm not thinking, oh, this music's fantastic. But we play like Undertale, which I'm, I'm, have any of you played that game? I'm, I'm assuming you've had to hear the music because that has taken the video game community by storm. <laughs> Before, yeah. we, before we started this interview, um, we may have been playing some Undertale together. <laughs> Might have been. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. So you, you agree with me then? <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. It's funny. When I was uh, making the set list, I was sort of kicking myself in, in the early days anyway. Now I've just sort of accepted it. But I was like, there's so much Nintendo in here. You know, I can't, I can't escape it. Koji Kondo has written everything good. <laughs> you know, and um, well, not just exclusive Nintendo, but it was all from the same era. And I remember Luke when he started. I mean, it's still the case, but not as much now. But you were saying, oh, why can't we do Halo? Why can't we do more modern stuff? Mm. Uh, Dan, you were saying that as well. Um, and we are, we are, ex- GTA. Yeah. and we are expanding. You know, mm-hmm. we have done stuff, but I feel that there is far less of a palette in modern stuff. Uh, I don't know whether that's partially to do with it being less sort of um, it's being it's it's more relevant in people's memory because it's not that old, mm-hmm. or whether it's more to do with the fact that, as I said before, um, the, the the Sonic palette is just so much more uh, fleshed out. I feel personally, it's just my opinion uh, mm-hmm. with the old stuff, mm-hmm. with the classic uh, gaming stuff. As well, there's less kind of like catchy motifs in newer games because yeah. they're that's mostly I mean. like it's, kind it's, of RPGs and you're kind of like, it's like a story like. 
Mm. It's a bit more realistic. It's a bit more kind of like a film track. Well, with, right. with I agree with that. With, with modern gaming, it's it's big. In order to suit the mainstream, it's it's you know copied its its brother film in mm. you know it's very much orchestral now. Yeah. and uh, it it kind of follows the image uh, a lot more of the game. And, and there's there's not as many melodies. It's all very kind of atmospheric. Or yeah, you don't tense. really notice it. It kind of supports mm. yeah. the atmosphere. Yeah. Right? yeah, and that's that's still very legitimate. But it's not something we could cover live. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. you know, and get people bouncing to. Yeah, yeah. we might have a bit of trouble doing something like Skyrim. Yeah, like Skyrim medley might be a bit. Mate, yeah, shut up, don't fuck you. Totally raved that. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. So I had a question for you. Um, you were mentioning that you had discovered some new music, some new artists online. Are, is there anyone? I mean, I, I'm just curious. How familiar are you with the, like the cover community? Just on YouTube, I guess. On like YouTube is one of the biggest places, and then SoundCloud. Do you uh, have any favorite artists? I'm just kind of curious. It's annoying. It's annoying. I'm I'm one of those really like annoying people with video game music where I tend to sort of listen to the original song, forget the artist's name. Oh, okay. <laughs> because um, I before long before I started ABXY, um, pro- this is probably the thing that inspired the whole thing actually. Quite a few years ago, because it's old now. Quite a few years back, um, I'm sure we've heard of Project Chaos. Okay. So they recorded yeah. the soundtrack. It was on Overclock Remix. Mm. Overclock. Um, those are the guys I follow for a long time. That website. Um, they re they re recorded um, uh, the Sonic Three and Knuckles soundtrack, and I remember hearing uh, Flying Battery Zone with this soaring electric guitar, and I remember just my dick flew off. Like <laughs> I was just like this, this, I was just sat on my computer and just like, oh my god, this is like it's like it was like a wet dream. Like honestly, like <laughs> someone's doing exactly what I because I, I I I tell you before, like I was listening to video game music and being like, oh, I'd love to hear this played on real instruments and people like really losing their shit to it and I saw this cut co- they heard this covers and I was like this is incredible stuff um so you know um they're probably the most the, 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 that's the name I could probably bring to the table I don't remember that a great deal of them um but yeah that was sort of the the inspiring thing okay so we're gonna start some quick fire questions you guys ready sure, sure. favorite video game soundtrack any order you want to choose go from Chris to Dan Oh, oh boy, it's tough. Oh. How can that be a quick fire? Right, I'll go first. I've got mine. I've <laughs> got on, mine then. straight down. Diddy Kong Racing. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's good. Diddy Kong Racing is great. Um, I've already sort of said mine, which is Sonic, Knuckles, Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Probably the greatest video game soundtrack. Though, <laughs> Undertale is probably... I mean, I, mean I, 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 I started listening to it when the game came out. I listened to the soundtrack before I played the game. And I thought, oh, I'm going to get so bored of this because I listen to it every day like an addict. Still listen to it every day. <laughs> like, it's not got old at all. So, pop, I don't know, what one of those. Oh, God. Uh, um, I'm just going to say uh, The Elder Scrolls, uh, mm. probably, because I... Well, it, no, oh, I stole Chris's. Oh, no. <laughs> That's fine, I got mine. Okay. I wish I said that now. <laughs> yeah, there, I, are, there are too many. Yeah, I've, I've always loved, loved this ever since Morrowind and mm. beyond, so. I'd probably say mine is uh, Faster Than Light, FTL. Okay. My favorite indie games anyway, but uh, yeah, just the soundtrack in there is just incredible. I just, it's, the, at- it's a, the atmosphere of the game is just... Oh. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, that's all I can say. Oh. Go on, Dickie. Um, mine's yeah, probably... I'm probably going to have to say the um, soundtrack for the Night Elf on um, World of Warcraft. We <laughs> 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 play that for like a whole year and literally it was just my entire life and every time I hear it like just brings a tear to my eyes. <laughs> it meant so much to me. The Night Elf, I've not even played the game, I'm laughing for anything. Yeah. <laughs> I don't right. know. Now I'm going to laugh at you. <laughs> it's a really, really nice soundtrack. All right. Let's get to the next one. Um, other than video game music, what's your favorite musical genre? Film music. Definitely. I'm a huge Hans Zimmer fan. I, I, that was a quick fire off. Yeah, no, I, I have Film to, I, music. I know that film music is just, for me, just incredible. The way mm. people it may evoke so much emotion from from just music itself is incredible. Luke? Uh, mm. Probably, uh, I, I'm going to say rock, kind of virtuoso music. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, being a guitarist, I'm, I'm very much uh, being, you know, being brought up to do a lot of shredding and uh, you kind of mixed it. Look the shred. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> brought up to shred. Uh, <laughs> he was born to shred this one. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I'll, I'll just say rock music. Okay, cool. Uh, it's it, I don't know if I can choose one really. Pop, I mean, I've gotten into fusion a lot recently, like jazz fusion, jazz rock fusion. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm partial to like um, house music and hip hop as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so a lot of electronic stuff, really. I don't the, as little guitar as possible normally <laughs> for me. Like I'm a big keyboard guy, so yeah, uh, jazz as well. So that sort of stuff. Awesome. I think for me, well, my favourite artist at the moment is um, Grimes, like her new album. Oh, like, yeah. I like that. So <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I listen to like pretty much everything. Like I love kind of like the Smiths and like the Beatles and then the Pixies and just kind of like. I didn't give out his name. I don't want to give out his name. Yeah, I don't want to give out his name. Yeah. That's too many. <laughs> yeah, too many. We'll be in the day. Uh, every, <laughs> yeah. everything, everything he's prepared. resisting he's fighting his tongue he doesn't want to troll but you want to you want to say something like T uh, what's his name K K Brockle <laughs> <laughs> I'm all over the shop man I am yeah. absolutely all over the shop who was that um, you showed to me at the library like, Frank um, Ocean what is one, isn't Frank it? Ocean's one? great yeah but that, that's in no way just a favourite genre he's big anything that's got a great message and anything that's got great players, I mm-hmm. I'm probably more down the fusion lane at the moment. Like just like Luke said, about guitarist, same with drummers. Mm. Yeah. But like, man, my Spotify and my iTunes are yeah. all over the shop. Yeah. I spent about three years of my life obsessed with math rock. Mm. <laughs> math rock, yeah. math rock's probably the, the biggest, the yeah. most common thing in yours, actually. But mm. all over the shop, man. Mm. Like, oh, cool. that's a hard question. Mm. Come back at the end. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and I think we'll do maybe one or two more. Favorite video game of all time. Oh. These are hard quick fire. I didn't say they were easy. <laughs> Slow fire. Don't start with me. Don't start with me. Um, well, I've already said mine, which is Sonic 3 and Knuckles. <laughs> and I'll say it again because it is the greatest Sonic. And then again, I do like Sonic Rush as well, okay. which is not like it's an underrated game. Um, I'm a, I'll tell you what. I will talk about this very briefly. I am a really big Sonic fan. Like, I'm one of those really annoying, gotta go fast. Like, I, I'm, it's like, I'm so embarrassed about him. Like, there's this whole shame Sonic relationship. Boom. Like, Sonic I'm, boom. Like, no, don't, don't look at the adventure series. Like, he, he's, he's still good in 3D. He really is. And I have to, you know, I have to, I'm that guy who, like, tries to defend Wait, him. Everyone. Did you say Adventure 2? Huh? Did you say Sonic Adventure 2? Adventure 2, yeah, that was really good. And I that soundtrack is my personal <laughs> favorite. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can listen to that soundtrack forever and yeah. have. Oh, crush 40. So I'm on, I'm on, I'm on board with that. <laughs> oh yeah, no, totally. No, we. I was thinking, I was thinking about doing some crush forty stuff, but then we'd need, you know, to sing. And is it, not, is it, is it SR seventy one as well? Ah, uh, I don't know. I'm pretty sure. I don't remember. I might be wrong. I might be wrong. To get live and learn. Well, SR seventy one is the fastest plane design. But okay, it, it's, it's the name of a band too. It is <laughs> the name of a band. He's right. Uh, mine would probably be. Uh, I, I'm gonna go. I can't decide in this franchise, but it's it's a Star Wars game. It is definitely a Star Wars game. <laughs> Rogue Squadron take, 2. Rogue you know, Squadron 2. You got to pick that. Oh, that is a great game. But I think I'm going to go with Knights of the Old Republic. Oh. I, I've i played those games as more times than I can count. And they're, they're great. I love them. Uh, who's next? Uh, I'll go with... Uh, I have two games because I can't decide between them. It's uh, <laughs> Oblivion, Elder Scrolls. Mm-hmm. Uh, just because... That was the first video game I ever really, like, properly got into when it was the game that came with my Xbox 360 when I first got it. Mm-hmm. And I, I stayed up at really late. I was super t- tired for school every day just because I just couldn't stop. You stay up late anyway. <laughs> well, yeah, no, but this, this is what started it off. And then my mother <laughs> came. That's what, maybe no, I, I, I know the head and you'll just get a, an uh, okay sleeping pattern. <laughs> and then the second would be probably Dota 2 just because... That was probably the, the game that got me into sort of PC gaming. I just, I, I played too much and I can't say I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should. Um, Want to go first? Yeah, go on. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, I'm going to do a Chris and split it too. Because yeah, we've got that. Oblivion. Because, mm-hmm. my man, same thing as Chris. I played that for like a thousand hours maybe. <laughs> it is a time, <laughs> time it, is, it, is a, it is a beautiful, beautiful game. And... I'm gonna, I want to go on a, on a curveball here, RuneScape. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, no, I should have done that. He still plays RuneScape right now. I do now. not play RuneScape right now. Yes, you do. You I cancelled like... my membership. No. I stopped playing ages ago. But Ages? It was like summer, last month. Last summer. <laughs> I, I went, I went no. on the old binge. They released that old school RuneScape. I was like, that's it. I I'm think going I played back a bit of a party and getting him back into bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Go on, Vicky. Um, just going to say World of Warcraft again. <laughs> I just really loved that game. But also Skyrim, like, when I, I never ended up finishing it because I borrowed it off someone, but, like, I just, that game, like, I just fell in love with it and literally, yeah, I just lost track of time. It was just my whole life, like... I'm not the only one who didn't play any of those games, the Elder Scrolls games. I didn't get my Perk Tree joke earlier. I know, I didn't get my Perk Tree joke. <laughs> Honourable yeah. mention goes to Diddy Kong Racing. Cry. Because <laughs> yeah. that game is... Oh, that game was my childhood, actually. That game was every emotion in one. And that was Crash Team Racing. Crash Team Racing. What a game. Let's just start shouting games. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Smash Brothers. Oh, oh. <laughs> All right, final you? final question. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, go, go, yeah, go no, ahead. Totally go on. Final question. What is your least favorite part of being a musician? What? Say least. Least. Yeah. Least favorite part. Least Ooh. favorite part. Ooh. 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 Is it having to spend all your money on a keyboard? No. Because <laughs> it's funny, like... I wouldn't it's actually really enjoy it. I wouldn't yeah. imagine spending anything else. I think it's trying else. to justify like your passion to other people because yeah. they don't see like what you're doing is like a legitimate thing. Yeah, <laughs> just oh, think, like, oh, story. it's just a phase. Yeah. Like, so my girlfriend's a biomedical student at uni, and like she, like her friends before they met me, actually, like they all bant with each other and they all make jokes. And um, one of the bands they have, one of the jokes they have is uh, one of the banter. One of the banter. What? <laughs> it's very good. I got. I know what banter means. I know what that he means. understands banter. Um, <laughs> yeah, they all they all they all call each other BAs, which is Bachelor of Arts, mm-hmm. um, which is like an insult for them because they're BS, which is Bachelor of Science. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bullshit. So if they're <laughs> question, <laughs> BS. Uh, 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 it's not BS, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway. Well, anyway. Yeah. So it's yeah. So you know, it's not. We're not really that. Resp- I don't know. I, I think the idea that I'm never going to be well. There's the stigmatism that a musician's always going to be poor, but I, I think I don't. You know, I don't think I. I, honest, I don't. I can't, I can't think of anything that's bad about being a musician, really, because no. it's it's just doing what you love doing. There's nothing bad about doing that. So mm. yeah, I think my, my least favorite part is what Vicky said. People just sort of looking yeah. down on you because you do music in a way. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like, they, they oh, think you're like you never else? grew up, kind of. Yeah. yeah, you get you get considered to be like a, a man child or woman child. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like no, this is I take this seriously. This is what I do. Mm. No, I think mine would actually be not being able. Uh, it, well, it kind it's of links in with time, money, yeah. but not being able to travel and actually uh, jam with other people you kind of want to, or well, I don't know, like share your music with people you areas you wouldn't, you know, of of people who like the same music as you. Like everyone is going to be quite different where you live or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't know. I like to spread the word and travel and I don't know. You'd like mm-hmm. to tour more? Uh, I, yeah, I guess I would. Go around and play. Yeah. yeah. That has nothing to do with being a musician directly, I guess. Yeah, well, it, it does, does. Uh, it does. You know, it kind of links into money, it's, so uh, touring's a part of it. I guess. I don't know. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot Huge of com- thing in music. Too. Yeah, no, no, no. I guess it, there's a lot of confidence as well as being a like being a performer. Mm-hmm. Like you're constantly like putting yourself on the ladder against other musicians. It's very competitive, especially at our uni. And you're like that. I like that. Yeah, but yeah, that's the thing. It's some days you wake up and you you you, you think you think mm-hmm. where you are on the ladder, and you're like, oh my god, I've got so much to go. I'm not there yet. Oh, and you just want to get back under bed. But sometimes you wake up and you're like, oh my God, look how much stuff I have to do. It's great. I can't wait to start learning all that stuff and engaging with it. Um, so it changes, really. It's, it's uh, yeah. Yeah. One more? Do I? Yeah. Sure, sure. one more would be great. Um, uh, one more oh, I thought it meant, I don't have a question. <laughs> no, I think you have one more person to answer. Because <laughs> like, houses are so nuclear nowadays. Playing the drums is an issue. You can't. It, yeah, you as you a drummer, you have, you have so many complaints, surely. <laughs> you can't. I've never set my drums up in the like, apartment we live in mm. because it's just too loud and that is my main gripe with being a drummer is that I, if I could I'd play for eight hours a day but I just can't mm. mm-hmm. so that's yeah. my, my gripe my only gripe about being a musician is not being able to be a musician <laughs> yeah. it's pretty apt actually yeah mm. alright well I'm going to wrap things up um, I wanted to ask you now you have a SoundCloud uh, page where you have a couple songs up and you have a YouTube channel where you have um, some live footage. Sure. What are your plans for the future? You mentioned that you wanted to tour a little bit more, have a few more gigs. You know, now that you you've kind of established yourselves and you've you built your repertoire, 
you know. Mm-hmm. So we spent a long time, as you said, building the sound, building the set list, taking it live. Mm-hmm. We now want to just get out there as much as we can. So we're looking to play conventions in the UK, um, any place with like-minded people. We're going to be playing other gigs as well. Um, it's just going to be playing, playing, playing as much as we can this year and the next and the, the next and hopefully the years to come to spread the word. For, because as I said before, there's not really a massive video game covers band. I don't know any other UK based That's video game covers band that. is in the UK. That's what I mean by like, yeah, uh, sharing, sharing yeah. this side of it. Yeah, yeah. So if anyone's watching, <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> likes video game music and wants to play video game music. Talk to us because we want to. We want to hook up with you and uh, make sweet, sweet music. Um, <laughs> in yeah. terms of uh, the SoundCloud and the YouTube, we might start uh, uploading uh, our performances to YouTube. We might do some more recordings put it to SoundCloud, but all that ultimately is in aid of um, just getting the net, the word out. And because we we want we want a scene here. I mean, we can't really afford to to pop to America just like as and when because there's quite a few bands over in the US, quite a few bands doing it and doing it really well. And we, we you know, we're inspired by them. Um, you know, like Arm Cannon, The One Ups and uh, Power Glove and, I mean, even Animatic Gucci. I mean, they're not uh, exclusively yeah, video game, but that of, side yeah. of sound, we're, we're, mm-hmm. we might be using some original stuff as well. But um, we just want to, we just want to spread the word and, you know, do that, fly the flag for, mm-hmm. the, for it. Well, it's, I can tell you one place that you'd be very welcome, is, which is MAGFest, and that's only a month away. So I don't know if you're going this year. <laughs> one of the organizers of MAGFest at the minute trying to get him to, to do an interview much like this, but for, for the sake of my dissertation. And he's very busy, as, as I'd expect. <laughs> <laughs> so, he'll, res- he'll respond one day, you know. Um, but yeah, the dream, that is the dream, literally, to play MAGFest. We would, we would be, I, I, I don't know. I would definitely, my heart would melt if we got the opportunity to play at MagFest. Awesome. Mm. Well, thank you all very much for joining me. Mm. Thank you all for watching. For having us very much. And as always, I'll see you next time. Cool. See, see you later, man. Take care. Bye, everyone.